What is going on everybody and welcome to a sockets with Python tutorial series. In this video, we're going to be working with sockets. So uh, we've got a lot of stuff to cover, so let's get into it. So I've got a server.py and a client.py already created. So if you haven't done that, which you probably haven't, go ahead and make two files and we're going to get started in the server.py. So uh, to get started, we're going to import socket. Now socket is part of your standard library, so you won't need to install that or anything like that. You already have it. Now what we want to do is define our socket object. So s equals socket.socket .socket, and the socket family type is af inet and then the actual type of socket is going to be socket.sock stream. Now af inet corresponds to ipv4 and sock stream corresponds to tcp. So this will be a streaming socket and uh, if anybody knows what af inet like why why is it called af inet? Like why don't we just say socket dot I don't know ipv4? Let me know down below. I'm really curious. So anyways, uh, it is what it is. So that's our socket object. Now what we want to do is bind that socket. So s dot bind and we want to bind it to a tuple based on sometimes this will be different, but anyway the tuple will be in this case because of the type of socket, an IP and a port. Now this is our server so we're actually just going to host the server on the same machine that we have the code so we're going to bind to socket.get host name so whatever the host name is basically localhost and then the port we're going to go with one two three four uh, you can go with any pretty much four digit port the lower digits uh, are generally going to be already occupied by some other program and you just don't want to step on their toes and more likely they're going to step on your toes so uh, once we've bound that socket, also let's just talk real briefly, what even is a socket? So, so a socket is just the end point. Um, generally, you're going to have like two end points, right, to have a communication. So that's just the end point that receives data. So with a socket, you send and you receive data. So the socket itself is not the communication. It's just the end point that like, receives that communication, and that end point sits at an IP in a port. So we will s.bind. Uh, that socket. Now what we want to do is s.listen. Because this is our server. We're going to be making some connections to the server. So this server has to be prepared for these incoming connections. And this server will prepare and leave a queue of five. So if it's under some sort of heavy load and like multiple connections are coming in so fast that it can't respond quickly enough and they start stacking up, we'll have a queue of five. <laughs> Uh, it should be more than enough for our purposes. So then what we're going to say is now we're just going to listen basically forever for connections. And if we get one, we're going to say client socket and then address equals s dot accept. So anybody connects, hey, we're happy to see you. We're going to connect. Uh, and then we're going to store the client socket object on, into this variable client socket. And then address is where are they coming from? So this will be like their IP address basically. So uh, so what we can accept this and then the client socket, this is just another socket object, much like our this socket object here. We can send information to this socket. We can this socket will receive information as we will eventually describe in client.py. Okay, cool. So once we've got that connection, let's just print some general debugging F strings. Um, we're gonna say connection from uh, address has been estab established exclamation mark because this is serious business okay so now what we're going to do is client socket dot send so we're actually going to send information to the client socket which i feel like is weird like the client socket is a socket object but it's like a foreign socket object so we're going to send information to it um, but I almost feel like, I don't know, it would make more sense to me if like we did s.send and then we passed in client socket. This feels weird to me. But anyways, this is like our local version of the client socket. So to send information to that client, we're going to say client socket dot send. What do we want to send to this person? So we're going to say bytes. You also could just do like a string and then dot encode or whatever. Anyways, we're going to say here, welcome to the server. And then, uh, what type of bytes are these? These are UTF bytes, UTF-8 bytes. So now, uh, that's pretty much all we need to do uh, to send some information. So I'll save that. Now, this is not nearly enough for 
regular use, but this is a basic example, as basic as I could make it. So now we're going to work on our client. Dot pi. So again, client is much like server. It's going to use the same exact socket. So I'm actually going to copy paste uh, that information. Now this socket, rather than binding, uh, instead what this socket really wants to do is connect. So we're going to say s dot connect, and then we pass a tuple again of the IP and the port that we wish to connect to. In this case, it's socket dot get hostname, and uh, the IP same as for one two three four. Now, often is the case, uh, your client will be like remote to your server. It won't actually be on the same machine. So with sockets, you can communicate to and from Python programs on the same machine, on like a locally networked set of machines, or even remotely networked machines. So it just doesn't matter. In most cases, you're probably not actually going to use socket.gethostname, or at least not all of the cases. You probably won't do that. You'll connect to an actual public IP or something like that, or a local IP. But for now, we're going to do everything on the same machine so everybody can follow along. Uh, cool. So we make our connection, and um, we're, we could be done, <laughs> but we're going to accept that message that was sent to us. So we're going to say message equals s dot r e c v for receive, and we're going to receive. And this is our buffer. So remember this TCP socket here, this is a stream of data. So you've got a stream, you have to decide in how big of chump, chunk, chunks, <laughs> or how many chumps, uh, how big of chunks of data do we want to receive at a time? So in this case, 1024, that's more than big enough, uh, but it really depends on what you're doing. Like if you're sending massive files, you wouldn't want a really tiny buffer size. You might want something a little larger. So, and then it also depends on the application that you're then going to use it with and stuff that this can get really complicated really fast. Like if you're really into like networking and stuff, uh, you could be paid a decent amount of money, like to come up with the proper amounts for these things. But anyway, for now, 1024, good enough. So now what we're going to say is uh, just print message dot decode. And this was UTF-8, so we will decode. And again, the, the, the way sockets are communicating at the moment, at least with the type of socket that we've established here, is a byte stream. So we're receiving these bytes. So they're sent as bytes, they're received as bytes, and then we just decode the bytes. So in this case, uh, we should get the message, we saved everything. So now all we need to do is run it. So I'm going to do CMD here. And um, I honestly, this is my local machine. This is probably not 3.7. Yeah, so instead what I'm going to say is pi-3.7. It shouldn't actually matter. You should probably be able to do it on any version of pi-3. Anyway, run the server. So the server is now running. And now I just need to open up uh, one more for our client. pi-3. Point, hello, 3.7 uh, client.py, and I think what I'll do is I'll like, I don't know, <laughs> something like that. Uh, we connect, we see welcome to the server uh, from our server, and then here, uh, where can we see it? Here, uh, connection from our IP address has been established. Okay, so it looks like that worked for us, but this also just like immediately disconnected, which is probably not really what we're after. Uh, you're probably looking for a more long-term connection, uh, but we could just like keep running that again, like every time we wanted to receive a bit of information, but that's kind of silly. Most people aren't actually doing that with sockets. They're going to be doing something far more complex. So um, I think the last thing I want to show you guys before we uh, leave and go to like the next video is, um, you know, the way that truly sockets are going to work in the way that you know you're actually going to be buffering data is most of the time you, you just like can't expect that with this um that this will be enough so in this case you could send just about any message as long as it was less than 10 24 bytes of data and you would be totally fine and you could you could set this as big as you could plausibly conceive but that would be silly what really happens is again it's a stream so i'm going to set this to eight and then hit save for the client. And I honestly don't remember. Did we, uh, I don't, yeah, no, we haven't done anything to the server. So I'll leave the server running. And instead, let's rerun the client again. And you'll see what we get is just welcome, <laughs> right? Because we only, re we received that one little itty bitty buffer, uh, but we're not actually handling for really anything here. So, so actually what we want to do is while true. So while true, we receive this data, 
So I'll tab that over, hit save, come back up here, rerun it, and we get this. Welcome to the server, <laughs> right? Okay, so yeah, that's what happens when you buffer data. But why do we have to buffer it? I mean, like, because we could have gotten away with 1024, but eventually someone's going to try to send a message that's bigger than that. And maybe on your chat, let's say you make a chat app, maybe you're, you set a character limit and it becomes more challenging to do more than that. But there's almost always going to be a reason why it's going to be better to buffer. Also, I mean, in most cases, you're going to be like below, let's say certainly below like 10 megabyte buffer. So if we're talking like files and stuff, you just, you have to be able to understand how that's going to work. So then you start thinking, well, that's not that hard, man. All we got to do is something like this, like, I don't know, full underscore message. And then you just make that an empty string. And then here, uh, you'll just say maybe something like this, like, uh, if, uh, if, or actually what we'll do is under here, you would say, you know, if message is less than or equal to zero, right? Or len message rather. So if length of the message is less than or equal to zero, uh, we're going to break. Otherwise, what we want to do is full message plus equals msg dot decode uh, utf8. Who needs syntax, right? Like, <laughs> duh. So then after this, we could print full message, full massage. And then we come over here. We'll break this one, maybe. Wow, I just, OK. <laughs> You jerk. Uh, pi poo pi dash 3.7 client dot pi. We try to connect. Uh, nothing happens. <laughs> okay. Uh, so what's going on here? Well, the problem is we, we still have this connection from the server and the, we, we don't actually know when the connection is fully completed, right? We're still actually the stream and then the connection is still exists. So then you come over here maybe and then, I don't know, client socket dot close, I think is the proper handling for that. Unfortunately, I don't think I can cancel this from running either. It's really annoying. Why can't I break sockets in running? pi-37 server.py, please don't tell me that it is in use. Come over here, rerun client.py, and then we see welcome to the server and it exits and so in this case, we were actually able to buffer all of the data uh, and we didn't really need any fancy logic. We received the message and we buffered. Um, so what's the big idea? Well, the big idea is it's meant to be a stream. We're supposed to be accepting data in a big stream. And if server gets something and it decides it wants to send some information, we're just simply not going to receive it. Now we could kind of treat this like a RESTful API or something and like build data until the client reconnects, accepts the buffer and then clears out what the client got or something like that. Um, but that's not the way that we typically will work with sockets. Instead, you're going to likely send a bit of information in, in a header and inform the client how much information is to come. So that's what we're going to be focusing, focusing on in the next video. If you got questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave those below. Quick shout out to my most recent uh, channel. There we go. Couldn't click on it. Channel uh, members, Omni Crux, Miguel Lat Lautaro, Alexander, and Mary Python. I love your last name. Uh, thank you guys very much for your support. It allows me to keep doing what I love to do. So thank you guys so much. And thank you to everybody else. Eventually, I'm going to figure out a decent way to uh, rethink people who have stuck around. Some people are still with me for like well over six months. I forget exactly what we're at right now for the max, but that's freaking awesome. So anyways, I'll figure out a way at some point. Point. So anyways, in the next tutorial, we'll talk about how do you actually will buffer and keep the stream open and all that and do some more cool stuff with sockets. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you guys in another video.